Hello to the Shove It Squad. Happy New Year. Someone's got to have one because I sure won't be. Look, I love making videos for you all and share my gratitude for making videos for the Patreon supporters. That was until today. Because one little idiot who needs a smack to the gut and a brick to the jaw is Tristan Van Rijn. If you ask me, he should double his contribution and pay a stupid name fee. This guy really knows how to push my buttons because he's only gone and done it. He is forcing me to make yet another Wes Pisco video. I thought I was going to have a heart attack when I saw his request. Last time out in 2012 or 2013 TNA, Wes could barely land a move and was nepotism defined. He is of course the son of Gerald Briscoe, and that's why he got so many shots in the business. But for today's piss soaked video, we're going to rewind time to 2009, before TNA, when he was a WWE hopeful in the developmental territory FCW. I was surprisingly able to pick up all of the matches, and we should see a lot of familiar faces, and I think it should be entertaining for the squad. Not for me though. Darren Bishop! And Wes Briscoe! Wes, it's time to let the piss go. Match 1. Count Franklin Furter versus Wes Pisco. He still somehow looks like he's covered in urine from an Aces and Eights initiation. The Count cuts a promo sounding like Santina Morella on crack. Wes quickly hits a fireman's carry takeover which pretty much strips his entire TNA run already. He throws an arm drag and the Count cowers in fear. Brisco then falls for the handshake gimmick and gets kicked in the gut. There's a really scrappy reversal into a pin and it's over. Pisco is very happy to beat the Count. Very basic stuff and it went 2 minutes, I guess it's a D. Match 2, David Otonga vs the master of the pissing in the wind, Wes Briscoe. We start with arm wrenching into the fireman's carry again. Wes rolls him up with a mahi straw cradle for a 2. He hits an arm drag and puts an arm bar on while smiling with happiness. Otonga just can't escape the arm bar. He has to take a shortcut to escape and decapitates the froth from the piss on the ropes. Otonga looks like he almost kills Wes on a clothesline. Wes wakes up and hits some shoulder tackles. He also lands a suplex for a two. Look, this is basic, but he's much more active than his time in TNA. Just as I say that, it's over as a Tonga hits the cab driver slam, the cab driver slam. The commentary say Wes Briscoe needs to spend less time on the beach. It's weird, I didn't really think of Briscoe as a small guy, but he looks really small in there of Otonga. Nothing remarkable, but nothing offensive. It's a D. Match three, six man tag. Wow, some names in this one. Jimmy and Jules Uso and Tanka, and they take on the Rotonda brothers and Pisco, who do a chest bump. Bray throws Pisco on top of an Uso, but doesn't do much else. Surprisingly, Bray Wyatt is the one to get isolated. You'd think they'd want to do that to Pisco. After a very, very long time, he tags Wesin, who tries to wakeboard his way to victory. Tanka is monkey flipped and basement drop kicked as the match breaks down. Tanka tries an arm drag, Pisco reverses that into a small package, and it's over. That victory is dedicated to his uncle who has just passed away. Once again, nothing amazing, but he was possibly the most memorable part of this match, so it's a C. Match 4, Heath Slater vs Wes Pisco. He looks so happy to be here. It's like he's dancing on my grave. I'm so confused, Heath Slater is towering over him. Pisco looks so short in this environment. Briscoe starts doing a lot of headlock takeovers. Pisco drops Heath to the mat like a log in the toilet and starts rolling him around the ring like a madman. Heath doesn't get dizzy though, and he takes over and throws Pisco's shoulder into the ring pole. The crowd are in silence as Heath slowly works him over. He drops West to the map for a two. Pisco manages to fight back in the corner, and there it is, the piss in the wind. That's the finish. No, it's just a two. But he is back awake now and hits a bad looking bat body drop and a basement drop kick for a two. The crowd are still sat in complete silence as Briscoe does a suplex. He reverses a Slater slam and almost gets the roll up win. Slater then taps him away of his boot and does a jumping Russian leg sweep for the free. Probably the most active I've seen Wes in the ring. The problem is he's completely lacking in charisma and the crowd are in silence. This is D. Match 5. Fandango versus Wes Briscoe. Dango is doing a gimmick here where he doesn't like to get dirty. He's fighting the wrong guy if he's worried about personal hygiene. Briscoe has an aggressive start, but he's sent into the ropes and clubbed in the back. Dango slowly beats on him. He has his neck trapped and Briscoe can't slide free. Eventually, he pushes Dango into the cover and he hits a really bad looking elbow. The shoulder tackle into the cradle doesn't get the job done though. Dango cuts him off between the ropes and hits a slingshot leg drop. Fandango then finishes Pisco with the falcon arrow. Will Pisco manage to impress us at any point in this video? Worst match so far, it's an S. 
Match 6 tag match. Kurt Hawkins and Jackson Andrews take on Wes Pisco and Eli Cottonwood. Two seven footers in this match. Briscoe is meant to be a face here, but he's too scared to start with the Giant, so he tags out. Kurt Hawkins, who is a heel by the way, isn't scared to wrestle a Giant. The commentary team make fun of how embarrassing Briscoe is. Briscoe comes in hitting an elbow on Kurt Hawkins. Hawkins bails to the ring and wow, Pisco with a piss in the wind out of the ring. I guess it wasn't his finisher at this time though as it's just the two. Briscoe wants to dive again but takes too long and gets jerked off the top. The giant, who somehow looks like Matt Boring is in. He boots Briscoe in the gut a few times. He slowly proceeds to hit three short arm clotheslines. Briscoe isn't done though yet, but he might be done after a sidewalk slam. No, the giant doesn't make a cover and tags Hawkins. Hawkins kicks him in the back and gets a two count. Soon after, Pisco does a jawbreaker and tags his giant partner in. After doing the damage, his giant partner throws Pisco on top of Hawkins. It should be over, but it's not. Hawkins ends up putting him away with a big impaler DDT. It was actually alright, and the crossbody off the top to the outside was something new. It's a low C. Match 7, Wes Pisco versus the animal Mason Ryan. Briscoe tries to hit and move and desperately tries to not get caught. But eventually he does get caught and Ryan swings him. And then there's a camera cut and Ryan beats him with one botched move. It's an S. Match 8. This is an interesting one. It's called a Generations match. It's Bo Rotunda, Bray Wyatt, Richie Steamboat, Tonga, The Usos and Wes Pisco. Pinfalls, submissions or throwing your opponent over the top. Everyone is a generational talent if you hadn't guessed. Does the apple fall far from the tree? Let's find out. Bray is dominating Wes so every man in the match decides to work together to throw him out. Bo Rotunda is eliminated but not by Wes. The Usos eliminate Steamboat. They also eliminate Tanga. So now Wes is trapped in a handicap situation. He slowly punches them. This isn't going to work. He's smashed with a back suplex for a two count. He also gets an ass to the face in the corner. Unfortunately for the Usos, they're double teaming backfires and one kicks the other. Wes quickly wins the match. Yay, he won. But he didn't really do anything in there at all. It's hard to know how to feel about WWE thinking Wes Briscoe was the greatest generational talent that they had. It's a D. Match 9, Adam Rose versus Pisco. They're rolling around the ring going nuts. Rose hits a couple of net breakers for a two. Briscoe looks done already. Rose catapults him into the ropes. After a very long time, Briscoe responds with a Luther's press. He rips his greasy hair out of happiness and hits a suplex. The modified flapjack gets Briscoe a two count. Briscoe wants to keep trying, but he shouldn't have bothered. He's rolled backwards with his head hitting the turnbuckle. Rose pulls him out the corner and hits a powerbomb for a two. Briscoe manages to recover and takes out one of his knees and tries a pin for a one count. He instantly transitions into a crossface. I thought that move was banned at this point in WWE. Adam Rose slops backwards on top of him and that's the free. What was the point in giving him the win in the last match only for him to lose again? He looks like a real jobber in this company. Maybe Pisco does belong on Ring of the Hawk. He just doesn't do much. It's a D. Match 10. Jinder Mahal versus Wes Pisco. Wes seems to be trying his best to make friends with the crowd. Wes hits two arm drags of authority which causes Jinder Mahal to dump in his nappy of anger. More basic hip tosses from Wes. He lands the fireman's carry takeover and goes to work on Jinder's little arm. Jinder shuts him down by kicking the rope into his neck. Wes responds to that for sunset flip, which doesn't get the job done, and Jinder immediately hits a net breaker. Briscoe survives a brutal submission and throws a drop kick and a shoulder block. He nails a flapjack now for a one count. This match is back and forth. Mahal nails the big boot for a two. Wes manages to get a boot up in the corner and hits the piss in the tornado. The pin is botched and nobody knows what's happening. Shred after Wes small packages him for the free. So the original pin was definitely botched because Wes made another pin attempt straight after. Really not much to say, as basic as it comes. He's trying to embrace the fans, I guess, and get a reaction. It's a D, I don't know. Match 11, triple threat. Jinder Mahal versus Jacob Novak, who you might remember from Tough Enough and the size of his nose. Versus the master of the piss in the tornado, Wes Briscoe. Wes is beaten down by the two heels. They take turns bashing him in the gut. The Hawk is jealous. Jinder Mahal hits an atomic drop, but Novak misses his clothesline and hits Mahal instead. Wes is down for a while, but reappears drop kicking Novak in the back and almost rolling him up. He's now gone again for a while until he comes back into the ring with a sunset flip on Mahal, quickly followed by a small package. Briscoe seems to love his pin attempts. He does a Mahi Star cradle to Novak into a crossface. Mahal breaks up the crossface. Mahal tortures him in an abdominal stretch before Novak impressively breaks that one up. Novak isn't done though and clotheslines Wes three times. Mahal looks to beat him with the submission but Wes runs up the ropes and falls back to pin Mahal. I love the look on his face every time he wins. Even Wes can't believe the push that he's getting. It's a C. Match 12. Michael McGillicutty, the son of Mr. Perfect versus Wes Pisco. 
Wes is taken down straight away and McGillicuddy tramples him. That fires Wes up and piss and grease drops down his head. Wes schoolboys him, not once, not twice, but thrice, and it sure wasn't nice. Three arm drags now. McGillicuddy grabs his eyelash and boots him out the ring. He drives Wes into the apron and gets a two. Wes desperately tries to fight back, but he's drop kicked away. McGillicuddy gets another two on a neck snapper special. Wes does manage a small flurry of offense now, but it's nothing we haven't seen before. McGillicuddy blocks a monkey flip and hits the McGilly Cutter for the three. Nothing good to be found in this one. It's basic, repetitive, and boring. It's an S. Match 13, Tag Team Turmoil. Four teams to compete under gauntlet rules, and the winners get to become the number one contenders for the tag titles. Hunico and Epico start against Wes Pisco and Xavier Woods. Wow, that is random. Fresh off being Consequences Creed in TNA, and now he's here with Wes Briscoe. They've even got their own little tag team entrance. Wes doesn't start this one. In fact, he stays out of it for a very long time. He does eventually join the match, hitting a drop kick after Xavier's snap mirror. Now there's a botch on Epico from the Sunset Flip. It almost looks like a Canadian destroyer. It definitely wasn't meant to be one, though. Wes gets isolated. He should have kept Xavier in there. Wes eventually managed to reverse an electric chair into a head scissors for a one count. It's not going well for Wes. He's hit of a turtle wheel backbreaker. Wes gets desperate and scrambles to the top and hits a Russian leg sweep on Hunico. Tags are finally made. This is going much longer than expected and there's two more teams to come yet. Finally, Wes makes a blind tag and hits the piss in the tornado for the three. The next team out are Jinder Mahal and Jacob Novak. Not these two morons again. We start with Jacob. Wes still has some energy. He monkey flips Novak and tries to make him tap with an arm wrench. He doesn't and Wes has to tag out. Xavier Woods struggles too and tags Wes. Wes comes back in with a sunset flip for a two. He tries twice to knock down Novak into a flapjack for another two. He is actually looking better. He's stringing move combinations together out there. Then, randomly, Wes small packages Novak and that team is done. The final team out is the giant team of Brodus Clay and Jackson Andrews. We come back from an advert break to see Brodus Clay destroying Wes with a suplex. Jackson Andrews tortures Wes overhead until he escapes. This giant sucks. Brodus Clay comes back in and he crushes Wes in the corner. The Giant tries to make Wes tap out again, this time with a bear hug. He can't do it. Instead, he lands the lightest slam of all time. Tyra smashes down on top of him, but it's still not over. Brodus then tries his own bear hug, which seems to be a bit more effective, but Wes is still not beaten. Ugh. Jackson Andrews again puts on a bear hug. This sucks so badly. Wes dodges a boot in the corner and thankfully crawls over to tag out. After a couple of minutes, Brodus smashes into his own partner and Xavier Woods rolls him up. Wow, Wes Briscoe is the number one contender for the tag titles. A very long match, but I'm still not sure I saw anything that impressive. I guess he looked more confident and strings things together better. It's a C. Match 14, tag match. Brodus Clay and Jackson Andrews versus Briscoe and Xavier Woods. Xavier does well against Clay and brings in Wes. Together they try to hit stereo drop kicks, but Wes is a bit late to the party. The Giant gets the tag. Wes does a muscle pose at him. Wes keeps kicking him in the quad, which isn't working. Briscoe then dodges a clothesline and tags out. Most of this match is just the Giants destroying Xavier. After a jawbreaker, Wes gets the tag. He hits Brodus with a missile dropkick. He manages to slip out of a Tyrus slam and sends him into the corner on a roll up for a two. Tyrus misses a belly flop and Wes Briscoe climbs to the top again. The piss in the hurricane connects with only the Giants stopping it from being over. Wes dropkicks the Giant away. Unfortunately, he turns around into a nerve hold choke slam from Tyrus. Wes Briscoe is beaten. It's amusing that Wes is turning into some sort of high flyer here. He was alright, nothing remarkable as a D. Match 15, FCW Tag Title Freeway. Wes Pisco and Xavier Woods take on Brodus Clay and Jackson Andrews and the champions are EC3 and Fandango. Xavier Woods is obviously very experienced and just playing good at this point, so he wisely starts instead of Piss. Piss gets tagged in against EC3. Him and Xavier hit a knee to the gut into a netbreaker. The big man makes the blind tag, so Wes is gone without really doing much. Our tag team heroes are kept out of this match forever. They don't look like they've got a chance in hell. Eventually, Fatboy Brodus gets a back body drop and Fandango tags and Pisco against EC3. Briscoe hits him with a flapjack for a two. EC3 closes him down with a running net breaker before Clay flattens him. Pisco gets a choke slam from Jackson Andrews, but Woods comes to the save at the pin. EC3 then press slams Woods out of the ring onto Brodus. Pisco can't even manage a roll up on EC3. Ethan schoolboys him and then changes his mind and picks him up of a powerbomb for a two count. EC3 just can't believe it's not over. He tries another powerbomb, which this time is reversed into a DDT from Wes. Wes climbs to the top and he hits a piss in the tornado and that is the three. 
Wow. Where's Pisco won a title in the WWE? Technically. And that finish was the most impressive thing he's ever done. And this match was fun too. On the negative side, he was stood around for a fair portion of this match just watching. Nice flurry of offense at the end though. Gerald Briscoe celebrates with them and it's treated as a big moment. I don't know, I can't believe I'm saying this. It's a B for Briscoe. Match 16, final match, FCW tag title match. Guessing they're losing this one then. Once again, it's Brodus Clay and Jackson Andrews versus the champions Briscoe and Xavier. Briscoe tags in for like a second, hitting a drop kick with Xavier before tagging out. I think he was scared of Brodus. Wes is gone for most of this match. Once again, I think this is deliberate. After an advert break, Wes is in the ring fighting Brodus Clay. He hits a diving double axe to zero effect. His crossbody is caught and he's suplexed overhead. The giant hits him with a big side slam. He sends Wes out of the ring. Wes manages to dodge a slam into the post and a Tyrus smash, but Wes is still unable to tag out. Jackson Andrew suplexes him. Oh no, not the bear hug from Brodus again. Can you imagine how badly he stinks? Brodus changes his mind and slams him. Jackson comes back in. Wes dodges a clothesline and jumps on his back for sleeper. After a bit of time, Jackson throws him off and tags Brodus in again. Brodus misses his corner splash and the tag is finally made. Clay seems like he's got the beating of Xavier. He looks to Vader bomb him, but Wes pulls his partner out of the way, and that's the three. Not a good match at all, it's an S. Game over. Now after this on a live show, the piss in the tornado was botched on either Jinder Mahal or Novak. Not sure which. Now Briscoe had a legitimate knee injury from this, and he was released from the WWE, and the tag titles had to be relinquished. Whilst nearly every wrestler he faced in this video did get a shot on the main roster, Briscoe never got one. He blames a bullying culture and also that Norman Smiley and Bruce Pritchard were constantly threatening to fire him if he didn't improve. He said he was a target because everybody said he was only there due to nepotism. Which, when you think about it, it doesn't really make sense. Most people he faced had family connections. The real problem is nearly everybody he faced in this video had some sort of angle to make it further in their career. Be that, they were a giant, they were really fat, they were really good on the mic, they had cool moves, or they were just a lot better than Wes. Wes looked really small in this environment. He had no cool moves, nothing memorable about him, and it just felt like a fluke victory whenever he managed it. Now that being said, he was actually better here than his TNA run, and Wes has credited Xavier Woods for mentoring him and helping him to improve so much. Now we've got to shove my arch nemesis a final grade for Ring of the Hawk Season 4. I guess he wasn't terrible. He was green. He was bland. But he wasn't terrible. He didn't cut any promos, which I think was pretty telling. Ugh, I can't believe I'm saying this. Here's proof that the Hawk isn't biased. Based on what we've seen here, he gets a low D. Briscoe doesn't go in the zone. Now I think I'm off to drink bleach. Briscoe's not in the shove it zone, it's a real reach.